Hello and welcome to Maker Monday with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts and I am your Makerspace Coordinator for the system. Each week I bring you a Maker project where you get to invent and create and have some fun uh, through the library system right here on Facebook. So uh, we've just got two more summer reading Maker Mondays left. So this week we'll be learning to make a really cool game uh, and then next week we've got our last Maker Monday. But I promise we'll return in the fall with more fun. Um, today, our project is a very simple one, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about making our own games, okay? And we're going to make what is called Mancala, um, and we're just going to use a little egg carton here. Mancala is a game from Africa. It is one of the oldest games still played um, in the world, and it's actually fairly simple, but takes a lot of strategy to get good at. So that's part of the reason I really love it, is that it's a simple idea, but it takes strategy and smarts to really play it well. And what the other thing I really love is that it's so easy to make your own <laughs> Mancala board that you can whip one up in just a couple of minutes and get playing with a friend or family member. Um, and I love making my own games, as do my kids. Um, and we've made our own games, gosh, since I was little. And it's a really fun process. So I thought that this would be a really good one to kind of start with. Um, we're going to talk about supplies in just a moment, but just so you know, I am watching for any comments on my phone. So if you have any questions as we go along, please make sure that you go ahead and ask and I will watch out for those. Okay, your supply list is really simple. Here we go. You need an egg carton. It can be plastic, it can be foam, it can be paper like this one. I just happen to prefer the paper ones because I can always compost them and stuff like that. So. Um, but like I said, it doesn't have to be. Uh, whatever you happen to have on hand. I will say you want one that pretty much has um, more of a flatter top um, rather than one that has lots of holes in it because you're going to use these areas to um, hold your, your markers. So um, you want to be able to seal that if you can. Uh, but that's really the only requirement. So you're going to need an egg carton. You're also going to need something to use as your markers. Now, traditionally, it would have been small pebbles or um, beans. Um, I've got some black beans here. Kidney beans work really well. Um, lima beans work really well. And we're talking dried beans. And those are great because one bag is like a dollar and you can, you can play forever and you don't have to worry about losing your pieces. But bottle caps, buttons. I used to play this all the time with my daughter. Uh, she had a button collection because she was obsessed with buttons. And so we used to play with her button collection. Um, I'm going to use today these pony beads, which you may have around the house. Can you see those pony beads? They're pretty common and um, they come in lots of different colors and I like color. Um, so whatever you want, as long as they will fit into the um, little indentations in your egg carton, you need to be able to fit three per, at least three per um, uh, hollow there. So pretty much anything will work. Whatever you've got sitting around, go for it, coins, really. Um, and they don't have to be a specific color. They don't need to be different colors. They're, you're going to be using the same ones both sides. Um, the only thing you need to know is that you need 36 items. So 36 total of whatever you're going to use. Um, okay, so that's the other thing. Now, as far as our tools go, you're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a pencil or a marker. Okay because we're going to be doing a little bit of measuring so that we can get these cups the right way. Then you're going to need some tape. You can use duct tape, invisible tape. I'm using some masking tape. Or if you have a stapler handy, a stapler will work really well for this too. We basically just need to be able to attach these container bits. Or these are called the mancala to our board. Okay. And so there's a variety of ways you can do that. If you want to, you can even glue it. If you like hot glue, that'll work too. Though I wouldn't use hot glue if you're using a foam egg carton. It'll melt it. Um, so you need that and that's pretty much it. And then you just need to learn to play Mancala and I'm going to go through how to play the game. Um, and you can find directions online. It's a very famous game. Uh, the other thing you might want to do is get some paint or markers or stickers or whatever you've got and decorate your Mancala board. Okay. Because it's really fun. And these make really nice gifts too. If you put them together nicely, paint them and, um, they make a really nice gift set to give to a friend. So this is a great upcycled gift that you can give too. All right, so let's start by making our board and then we'll go over how to play Mancala. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about some other games that you can create pretty easily at home.
Okay, let's switch to the other camera. Here we go. Hello. All right, just making sure I have my phone, putting on our light so we can see everything. I've got my, this is what I mean by pony beads. These are neon and oh look at how, oh, you know what's happening there? <laughs> I think I know what's happening. Um, I had a filter on before for green screen and all the green beads are coming up black. That's really cool. I'm gonna have to think about that. I feel like I could use that somehow. But, um, so that's weird. <laughs> I obviously didn't turn off the filter. I thought I had, whatever. All right, my egg carton. So standard paper egg carton, as I mentioned. And the first thing we need to do is we're gonna take the lid off and we wanna be careful because we wanna use the lid. Um, and we're gonna take off this piece. So um, you, with a paper one, you could pretty much just tear it off, but I wanna keep it kind of looking neat. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and go right along the edge. I'm gonna recycle that. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, remembering again that I want to be able to use this, so I wanna cut it nice and neat. Neatly, yeah, neatly. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be my board where my beads are gonna go, and this is gonna be for my two mancalas, which are where I earn my points. All right, I'm gonna get my ruler, and I'm going to, I'm gonna use my marker. I want to measure about four and a half inches, okay? So we've got four and a half inches. I'm just gonna mark on either side of my egg carton. Then I'm gonna do the same from the other. And you know, I'm being precise with it because I want it to fit together nicely. If you wanna eyeball it, this is one that you can get away with eyeballing it a little bit, but you do wanna make sure they're both pretty much this, you know, even. Okay, um, you can of course connect those dots, right? And draw down here, oh, did I? See, I didn't take the time to make sure I measured just right. Oh, yeah, I'm a short, I'm a little short here. That's what I get for rushing. Okay, and just connect my dots. So I get lines that I know where to cut, okay? Now I just use my scissors and cut right along that line. And you can use pencil if you prefer, if, especially if you're gonna be coloring it with markers later. You may prefer to use pencil so that none of this shows up. That works fine. Just gonna cut this. And again, this center piece that I have left, that's gonna go recycling. Now, if you are doing plastic, like the clear plastic version of this, um, you may want to be careful because that can get kind of sharp. So you may actually want to cover that with a little bit of masking tape so that you don't get cut on it. I've, I've gotten my fingers caught on that. So it gives you like a paper cut, but um, better safe than sorry, as they say, right? Right. Okay, so now I've got my two end pieces. These are gonna be, as I said, the mancalas. To make sure that our pieces don't roll out on us, we're gonna cut about an inch, okay? If you can see, about an inch. And actually it works out nicely on mine. Um, right up along the side here and I'm going to fold it okay I'm going to crease that nicely and this is going to create a barrier so that when we attach it to the egg carton our beads aren't going to roll out now you'll notice we do have an opening here like I said you kind of want one that doesn't have that but if that's a situation you could just use a little bit of tape and this is where like if you're a duct tape fanatic like I am um, you may want to just pull out the duct tape and actually clean that up just to cover that. You could also use a little bit of um, paper or you could probably just push that down and flatten it and tape over it. So um, and I'm going to do the same here. Just cut my little and fold that up. Get that nice crease. And I'm just going to take a bit of my masking tape and I'm going to just kind of cover these holes so that my beads do not go rolling out. Okay. And again, once you get to the point of decorating the whole thing, you won't notice that because you can cover it with marker, cover it with stickers, cover it with paint. It's part of the reason I like masking um, tape. It tends to take paint pretty well, especially acrylics, not so much water 
watercolor paints, but acrylics it takes very nicely. Same with marker. Okay. All right, now I just need to attach these to my egg carton. And like I said, if you want to, you can use um, a stapler and you can just staple it right here where it kind of meets up. I'm just gonna use a little bit of masking tape like that. And I just wanna kind of make sure it's nice and even, right? When I attach it. Okay, so you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just take a little piece along the bottom too. And you could see where hot glue would be really useful here, or, um, or like I said, if you want to staple it. But the idea is you want to make sure that your beads are going to stay in here when you're playing. And I'm just going to do the same on the other side. the same thing just make sure it's kind of even and use a little bit of tape on the bottom to hold it all together and there you go that's basically the construction of the game it's very simple see what I mean very simple upcycled materials and you can have a game to play with your friends really quickly okay now I'm glad that that fits just move these things out of the way all right so now that you have your game made how do you play well you start by just putting three beads in each of our little wells. So, and again, it, whoop, <laughs> it doesn't matter what colors. So I'm just gonna pop them in there. And it's so funny, those green beads that you can't see. Science. Um, for those of you that have been to the Makerspace with me, you know that we have a really big green screen there. Um, and it's really fun to use. And I can't wait to get back to the Makerspace and get some video programs going on again. But in the meantime, there are some great apps. And as you can see, just about anything that's got that color will let you uh, do some green screening. Okay. So the way this works is that I'm sitting on one side and my opponent would be sitting across from me. So you want to place this horizontally. This side, this row, are my beads, my wells, and this is my mancala. My opponent, these are his, and this is his mancala. The goal of the game is to get as many beads as possible in your Moncala before someone runs out of beads in their wells here, okay? So once either person runs out of beads here, the game is over and you count up who has the most beads in their Moncala. So your goal is always to try to get as many in here as possible. To play, very simple. Basically, one important rule, and that is you can take three beads from any of your wells and place them. So say for this, I'm just going to go ahead and grab all three beads from this well. Now I'm going to place one bead per uh, spot going around counterclockwise. So if I'm picking from here, I would put one here. This is my opponent's. I don't have to give them a bead, um, not in their mancala. And then I place them in my opponent's wells. And that would be the end of my turn. Now you can get a free turn and I'm just double checking the rules because I printed them out. There, I'm actually kind of doing my own version from this book called Remake It, but I'm just reminding myself, if your last piece ends up in your Moncala, if your last piece ends up here, then you get to go again. You get to take another three pieces and, um, and keep on going. So, um, so if you're coming around, like say, let's see, how could I do it? <laughs> um, it is, challenging to end up there, right? Um, so if you end up here, you get a free turn. Um, and you only have to put beads in your Moncala. You don't have to put them in your opponent's Moncala. And let me make sure here. Um, oh, and you know what? I misspoke. I just realized. I can pick from anywhere on the board. I don't have to just choose from mine. So if I want to say, take beads from my opponent's side and do one two, three, I'm allowed to do that. Of course, they can do the same to me. The only rule is I don't have to fill their Moncala as I go around, 
okay? So if I was doing that, of course, I would want to maybe go one further back. So I'd go one, two, three, and then I'd get a second turn. Um, and like I said, once someone is out of beads in their row, then you stop the game and you count up what you have in your Moncala. Um, so that's basically how the game is played. It's very simple, but as you can see, you're gonna wanna think about how you place your beads and how you move around the board. So that is a really fun game and I encourage you to go ahead and make one today and start playing. I know we've got some rainy days coming up, which is why I wanna to talk to you about games. Okay, so Moncala is not the only game that you can make. There are lots of easy games to make, board games especially. All you need is a piece of poster board or even a couple printouts. Um, you can find online um, ready-made board game um, templates that you can put together and make your own board game. You can make cards out of just scrap paper or index cards. And you can create trivia games. You can find an old pair of dice from a different game and use that to make your own game. There are a million different ways to make board games that you can play with your friends. And I encourage you to give that a shot because making your own game really gets you thinking. I used to, when I taught science, at the end of the year, when we had to study for the final, because I taught middle school, I would have everybody break into teams. We'd each take a different chapter or a different section of the material, and we'd make a trivia-based game, whatever we wanted, based on that. And then over the course of a week, we'd play each other's games and practice the information. It's a really easy way to um, learn something new, to have a little bit of fun. So I hope that you go ahead and create your own games. And if you do, I want to remind you that we would love to see what you're making. Um, you can share that on social media. So you can use the hashtag Warren Lib and you can post on Facebook. Um, you can use our Padlet um, for a safe place to share your games. Okay, that is moderated by me parents. So you don't have to worry about kids um, using that website. Okay, I'm the one who's there making sure that it's safe for them. Um, and all you have to do is register. Uh, but you know, we would love to see what you're creating and making. So if you do share it, please give us a hashtag or just comment right on this video. I'd love to see what you're making. All right, that's pretty much it for today. Just a reminder, if you go to our website at warrenlib.org and check the event calendar, we have lots of fun still planned for the last two weeks of summer reading. So don't forget to check that out. Um, I have uh, Friday Steam at four o'clock, Tool Time at five o'clock on Fridays. Um, at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays, we have Lego Lovers. Uh, and coming up this Saturday, this is really big news, big, big news. We have our TREPS Marketplace. Each year we host entrepreneurship classes for kids in the area. We call them TREPS, short for entrepreneur. And they launch their businesses at the Blairstown Farmers Market. So they will be launching their businesses on August 8th, 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Blairstown Farmers Market on 1 Sunset Hill Road in Blairstown, uh, right by the elementary school. Um, and we've got, I think, 13 or 14 young entrepreneurs launching their businesses that day. Um, everything from lemonade and cake pops to beautiful jewelry and handmade items. So really gonna be exciting. I hope that you can come out and join us. Do wear a mask, you can bring cash. We'll be socially distancing, using hand sanitizer and keeping it very safe outdoors. Um, but it should be a really exciting day. And I'm always amazed at how hardworking and dedicated my young entrepreneurs are. So please check the calendar for that and join us. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you stay safe and healthy. I will see you again very soon, I hope. Um, the make, the uh, library should be opening up soon. We're getting it all prepared so that we can safely enjoy time back in our libraries. Um, I'm Sandy Roberts for the Warren County Library System. I miss you. I can't wait to be working with you in person again, but in the meantime, we're still here online. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making. Take care. Thank you.